school. Now, I didn't go to film school for sound. I, I went to film school to be a filmmaker, which I still am. But th at the time, I had no, uh, you know, um, no desire, I guess, to, to get into the sound aspect of it so much as I just wanted to be a part of the filmmaking process. Right. And so um, after school, I, I moved back to Detroit and then um, started freelancing as a sound mixer because that's what the, the, the gigs were available in the area. And one thing left, led to another, and I started recording sound effects on the side as a, uh, just as a hobby, as a, just something to do for an afternoon. I wanted to try to get better at miking people and, you know, different miking techniques. And I'm like, well, how do I do this? You can't really mic people unless you're shooting people, right? So you got to have, you know, a scene and like stuff for the people to say. So there wasn't really a way for me to play around with mics or experiments. So I'm like, well, I'll just go record some sounds of stuff happening. Up until that day, um, literally the only other sound effects experience I had was like an hour and a half at film school. Um, and it wasn't even the entire hour and a half. It was like a half hour lecture. And then the guy said, all right, go out for an hour with this recorder and, and record something. That was it. And wow. we went to my buddy's apartment. I'll never forget. We went to my buddy's apartment and we recorded like, you know, let's record the shower. So he turned the water on. Oh, wow. It really sounds like water, you know, and recorded like little things like that, the microwave and all that kind of stuff for like a half hour. And then yeah, sure, the class. sure. But so at that point, I, I knew nothing. I just wanted to use microphones. So I went out in the field and literally in a field, um, <laughs> went out into a forest, uh, to a field. There was a construction site. I ended up recording. I found this old car. I think it was a pickup truck. It was an old, really rusted. It's like something from like the 40s. Mm. And um, I found, and it was still kind of intact, but it was on the side of this hill. And I found out like a little small hill, but I found if I leaned on it and, and kind of you know rocked back and forth, it made these really cool squeaking sounds. <laughs> so there I was for 20 minutes out by myself in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> You know how it is when you're recording yeah. and you found you find the sound. You yeah. just sit there and rock back and forth for 20 minutes, you know. Um, and I just thought I got the biggest kick out of this sound. That sound effect, my very first day, ended yes. up being used in some projects. And yeah. one of which, the most notable that I could tell so far, uh, has been Sons of Anarchy. They used it in in um, one of the scenes there. So. Uh, it's just really kind of funny. I had no desire to sell sound effects or produce them professionally. I was just looking, you know, for kicks for that afternoon, you know, yeah. something to do and to learn, you know, mic techniques a little bit better. Uh, and then, you know, one thing, you know, leads to the next. And before you know it, you know, I pr produced all those libraries. So It's always nice to have a library that has a lot of elements. You know, there are a lot of, you know, it's uh, you know, the analogy I always use is they're the ingredients. It's not the loaf of bread. It's everything. You know, it's the eggs. It's the butter. It's all that. And that stuff is really, really helpful when you're creating and doing, you know, sound design and sweetening something and you just need the right squeak or the right groan or something to make something more, have more character. Um, well, that was my biggest complaint when I first started producing sound effect libraries is because um, even the pro stuff, it's like they would they would have like a, whatever it was, you know, uh, an explosion. They would give you like little debris elements to sweeten it, but they would only give you like three. Yeah. I'm like, well, yeah. I, what if I got more than three? Like, yeah. like, or they would give you like three punches, and I'm just like, you know, a hard, medium, and a soft. It's like, well, what if the guy's gonna hit him more than <laughs> exactly. twice hard? You know. And so I would always push for let's give them tons of elements. Let's give yeah. them like you know, let's give them twenty punches or what ten car do. crashes or. And, um, and they no, 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 people won't buy it. And I'm like, but this is, the, <laughs> this makes, con I'm like, yeah. I've got all the elements. I'm, I produced all this stuff to make these others, you know, these sound effects. It'd be great if I could use these other elements to create even more sound effects that were even useful or even better yet. Why don't we take the original elements and release those on the library? And um, I got a lot of pushback from various different uh, companies that I produced for. And then finally, when I started Blast, I was just like, forget about it. Yeah. I'm just going to do it my way. And it's like, people, I know people are going to use this stuff. Yes. And it's the weirdest thing. Like even the stuff that you think is quote unquote scraps, like, ah, I don't think anybody, but you know, is going to use it. Those are the things that people call me up and go, you know what? Nobody ever gives us this stuff. We want more of this stuff. 
And so I knew I was onto something when uh, when I started producing content like that. And so yeah. the entire time we were producing for Blasphemy was the whole push of it was let's just get as much raw material into the hands of the designers. So we wanted to make sound effect libraries, not just for people that wanted to make sound or wanted to use sound effects, but also people that wanted to create their own unique sound effects, not just stock sound effects, but elements that they could use to create their own stuff. So now that's definitely uh, a, a useful thing i mean you know where i know we're both disciples of of ben ben burt and you know he spent that whole year <laughs> he spent that whole year just recording elements and i mean he recorded real things too like planes and yeah. vehicles and all that but he really spent a lot of time recording you know the groans and and creaks of old doors and motor elements and yeah that stuff is just really really and that's one of the reasons why the star wars world the the universe the whole franchise has a very distinctive sound because it's built on this elemental thing that he created this is uh, our first our first so. official announcement that yes the hollywood sound museum is partnering with soundeffects.com and i'm thrilled uh, that you asked me thank you so much okay. for uh, for joining for joining your 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 ilk your your yeah. your company so, i think the site will now be uh more Steve Lee. <laughs> oh God! I, I so we're gonna actually should have told the, the story. The, the Steve now Lee. more Steve Lee. It was very Steve Lee now, but uh, but yeah, I'm gonna help uh, building content and uh, uh, creating more awareness and uh, sort of merging the two. Uh, we're going to be making uh, some of our libraries from the Hollywood Sound Museum available through SoundEffects.com, which is very exciting. Um, we're, we're working on all the details and all that, but uh, it's going to happen so we can actually talk in in public, talk in open sunlight about this. So I'm there's going to be some cool collections that you've got. Uh, I don't, we can't really say who they are, but we got some pretty, pretty cool stuff coming from up. some pretty big movies, too, that if people want to have some collections and, you know, some of them, it's interesting how there's some older effects and like one of our collections is from uh, the great Kay Rose library and she was the first woman who won an Oscar for sound editing. Um, and she's got these, you know, analog of effects that are, you know, kind of older and all that, but, and she has a lot of the old studio libraries when she was, she was an editor on like on Gunsmoke and like the big Valley and all those. And so she's got libraries from that era and I, we, we're probably going to release some of those too, because I, it's always fun to have this stuff when, especially if you're working on like a movie within a movie, it's always great to have something sound timely of that and have that material available. Uh, so, you know, some of that stuff and a lot of contemporary stuff. Uh, she would hire the best in the later films she did, like, like the great John Paul Fasal, one of the great recordists of, of our time. Um, I've got a bunch of stuff I'm reviewing for possible inclusion with soundeffects.com and uh, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna have fun with it and make a lot of a lot of new stuff available and uh, hopefully inspire a whole new generation of uh, of uh, soundies. So well, I think it's very fitting, especially with obviously with who you are and your career and what you've done, but certainly with the Hollywood Sound Museum, I think it just makes it it makes a perfect fit. So yeah. well, I appreciate that and uh, and you've always been, very, you know, as, as Israel said in this question, and as I said, reading your, your books and everything, you've always been very good about sharing the craft and getting the word out, because that's, that's what it's all about, really, is, you know, inspiring people 